in the Sports Center, Gary, uh, we mark the untimely passing today of Pete Axtell, one of the consummate sports journalists of our time. Now, Pete was a fixture here on ESPN as a thoroughbred racing reporter and, of course, as one of the vital cogs in ESPN's National Football League coverage. Every Sunday morning and evening, Pete was there on NFL game day in primetime along with Chris Berman. Watching him, he touched me with often he made me laugh and mm. made me say, I wish I'd have said that. I'm saddened now knowing we'll not be touched by it again. No one worked with him more closely here than Chris, and from our Pro Bowl coverage in Hawaii, he has some thoughts on the passing of Pete Axtell. The minute you got to know Pete Axtell, you immediately loved him. Probably many watching at home on TV didn't understand, figured he was so distant, so aloof. Maybe that's because you never had a chance to meet Pete personally. His heart, his joy of life, his wit, his spirit, always unfailing. I know he enriched all of us here at ESPN, much as he enriched so many he came in contact with many years before. For a quarter of a century, Pete lived and worked at the heart of sports. It was a love affair spawned in boyhood and entered maturity when, at 21, Pete birthed out of the New York newspaper scene, a cub reporter with a degree in comparative literature from Yale and a deep love of horses that found daily expression in the old Herald Tribune, where Pete's prose compared favorably with the likes of Red Smith, Jimmy Breslin, Dick Schaaf. Pete went on to make indelible marks at Sports Illustrated, Newsweek, and Inside Sports, lighting up their pages with some of the most liveliest and most important sports writing of his time, and garnering some of the most coveted awards in American journalism. Pete came to us at ESPN in 1987 as an analyst on NFL Game Day and NFL Primetime. He was immediate success with the audience and, yes, of course, his colleagues. He impressed us with his quick, intelligent, often funny responses on camera. But where Pete really shined was in the pieces he'd bring back every week from the field. He had that ability to get close to the stars, an unteachable talent that comes straight from the heart. For example, when everybody else had forgotten or no longer cared, Pete went down this past season to see former Redskin quarterback Doug Williams in Zachary, Louisiana to find out why he wasn't playing football anymore. The questions were short and unflinching. Too black. Well, <laughs> that's a good one, huh? I would hate to think that it's 1990, but who knows? Pete was no less honest when he confronted Chuck Knoll. Is the game passing you by? Well, you know, you can interpret a lot of questions. You know, you get questions, why don't you throw more to your tight end, for example? Or, or why don't you do this? Or why don't you do that? Why don't you have more gadgets? What they're really saying is, uh, why don't you win? Pete's last piece on ESPN came three weeks ago on primetime when he put sports in its proper perspective. We wish our friends and loved ones and patriots in the desert the good fortune of the Giants. We also thank them for representing all of us in a far broader scale war and reminding us to keep our weekend fun and games in perspective. But when we think of Pete, as we will often do in the years ahead, we'll see him in his favorite setting, trading horse talk with like-minded sportsmen, or standing the morning at Gulfstream near his home in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Goodbye, Pete. It was a hell of a run. Conclusion of the opening round of the Footlocker.